A lot of times when I talk to um, Christian friends or non-Christians and I talk about what God's doing in the world, I just talk off the top of my head and I say things, you know, like the Bible says this and this is happening. And so I'm just going to kind of talk that way now, okay? There are things happening in the world. Scripture says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and, you know, demonic powers in high places. I'm going to paraphrase a lot because I'm going to talk just like I'm talking to a friend, okay? Today on the news, on um, NBC News, they were saying that there was a huge bank robbery through cyberspace and what they did is they hacked into um, I'm not sure what type banks or whatever but they hacked into financial institutions and got prepaid visa card numbers and they took these millions in numbers and made bank cards out of them after hacking into these institutions and they had people all over the world taking money out of ATMs with these cards. And when they hacked in, they took away the um, withdrawal um, restrictions. So they could withdraw just tons of money out of these ATMs. And they stole just millions and millions of dollars. Now, if you think about it, all these things happening in the world, the identity theft, this theft that happened today, all these um, hackings into computers, you have terrorists going out and buying stuff to make bombs, um, you have people getting on airplanes that they say we can't trust and stuff like that, and they check everybody before they get on planes and they are ridiculous about it, and they're make an 80 year old woman take their shoes off and stuff like this and it's ridiculous but if you look at reality we wrestle not against flesh and blood this is not humans uh, that have inspired this people talk about the Illuminati and the Masons and all this stuff and there is a place to talk about that stuff but after you study it thoroughly you find out that it goes beyond that it goes beyond the Catholic Church and the Masons and the Illuminati and the Bilderbergers and all that. It is beyond that. It is beyond um, any one nation even. It is beyond the human nations. It is God bringing about the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what the book of Revelation is actually about. And people tend to forget that. It's about Jesus revealing himself and returning. It is also about the seals that Jesus will open in order to bring this about. And it also says that God allows the fallen angel, the devil, he's called Satan, and he's the serpent, and God allows him to do certain things to bring about a one world government and the mark of the beast and is happening quickly and these things like this bank robbery today and these identity theft and stuff is I believe orchestrated by the fallen angel the devil so that this world government ran by the devil can have an excuse as to why everybody has to have a mark to buy or sell to identify themselves. And it's all leading up to submitting to a world government. The terrorist, uh, worldwide terrorism, if they can identify everybody and keep people from buying and selling except when they control it, you can stop terrorism. It also will stop the drug trade. It'll stop um, things like bank robberies, stuff like that. Um, it'll stop all kinds of stuff. It'll stop all fraud. And just about anyway. I mean, there'll always be somebody to be able to figure out how to cheat. But generally speaking, it'll stop just about everything. 
But what it will do mainly is cause people to go against the plan of God. And that's what all this stuff is about. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, demonic powers and satanic powers. And if you study it thoroughly, I really encourage people to study words. I mean, you think about how important words are. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now think about that. God has given humans the ability, ability to talk and make words. Now when God has a verse like John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. You need to study words. Get you a good dictionary. Get you a good, strongest, strongs concordance. I, I'm telling you, I've used this in my other videos, and I've talked about this, but I talk to people, do you know what a concordance is? And people say no. They don't have a clue. And if you're serious about knowing what the Bible is all about, you need a concordance. Just a minute. i got to show you. Okay. I didn't want to have to get up, but I'm going to. So I can show this to you. And I show this a lot because I recommend it to everybody to get you one of these right here. It's better than the old Strong's concordance. This is excellent, excellent, excellent. You need one. You need a good Webster's Dictionary that tells you the origin of words and the Latin and the Greek and all those. You need that. Don't settle for a cheap dictionary that doesn't have that. Okay. The newer the dictionary, the, wor the worse it is because I've discovered that. I went out trying to find a current dictionary with the Latin and the Greek and the old high German and all that and you can't hardly find one unless you spend hundreds of dollars okay but if you really want to know what's going on like study who the Babylonians were most people don't even know you can figure it out with your Bible with the strongest strongs concordance you can figure it out and with a good dictionary and with a good study Bible that shows you where Noah okay Noah had three sons Japheth Shem and Ham study these three sons of Noah study what happened to them study where they live study what cities they started study all these things study who the enemies of Israel were through the Old Testament study words not how they're spelt necessarily how you pronounce them okay uh, you'll learn all kinds of stuff if you do that ignore how words are spelt most of the time sometimes you have to but if you pay attention to how you pronounce words you'll it'll hope open your eyes a whole new world of what's actually going on in prophecy in the spirit world in what is actually running nations what is actually running everything you'll be amazed what you find um, so like the word male you have M-A-L-E and M-A-I-L both of them pronounced the same but um, I mean, they're spelt different, but they're pronounced the same. And because they're pronounced the same, you can learn all kinds of stuff as to why you have a postal service and why they deliver the mail. And it's amazing what you can find. Okay. Um, you have the word Horus. You have, it's a false god Horus from the Greeks and Romans you have the all-seeing eye of Horus on the back of the dollar bill it's all-seeing eye of Satan it's all-seeing eye of the occult but whore 
Horus. Okay, you have the Hor of Revelation in chapter 17. Okay, and you have Hor us, Hor US, United States of America is Mystery Babylon the Great, the Hor of Revelation 17. And it just so happens it's called Hor us, Hor US. And I, I know people are going to say, yeah, right. I don't care if people think that. You can learn this stuff. It's amazing. If you start looking up the Greek and things like that, how many words have U.S. in it that points to what the United States is actually doing in the spirit world, why the United States is doing stuff according to the spirit world. Um, just study words. Words are extremely important. Um, I mean, God wrote his Bible with words, with written words. The Old Testament, New Testament. Jesus even said, for it is written, and men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Study words. It'll open your eyes and make time to do it. People say, I don't have time. Make time to do it. You can. Whatever's important to you, that's what you do. People make time to go to work every day. Every day, People make time to cook dinner. People make time to fix their car. Well, make time to study the Word and study words themselves and match it up. And ask God to give you the ability to study words. Ask God to give you wisdom because you have to have wisdom from God to really see what's going on. If you don't ask God for wisdom, you'll probably never see it. Well, I know you won't. Ask God to give you wisdom. Ask God to make you a master of the Bible. Ask God to make you a master of his word so that you will know it thoroughly. And study it. And ignore. If, if nobody else pays attention to the Bible and to words and to Jesus, and to live for God. If you're the only one by yourself, that's fine. Just live for God. Because what you'll find is when you really get serious about God, you're by yourself. And that's the truth. It is really difficult to find somebody that is very serious about God, especially in America. Okay? So anyway, I just thought I'd talk off my sleeve here. God bless you, and have a good day.